नमस्कार सुबोदय स्वागत डे फोर क्लब टू स्पोकन इंग्ली सीरी वेबिनार सीरी फर् टीचर्स मी अंदर की स्वागत मी तो उक्टर टी मोहम्मद इस्मा सो दिश लाइव इंटराक्ट वेबिनार स्ट्रीमिंग आ SERT AP official YouTube as well as Facebook channels with us today uh, uh, professor selvendra uh, jairaj garu is with us i welcome selvendra jairaj garu to the today's uh, session good morning sir uh, good morning with us uh, pokur shrinivas garu also uh, there from your digital education of SERT good morning and welcome you sir so i request uh, uh, pokuri shrinivas garu to introduce uh, today's resource person to the viewers yeah uh, thank you uh, good morning and good day so uh, welcome uh, professor jairaj garu uh, um, professor jairaj garu from uh, department of uh, phonetics and spoken english and uh, uh, language sciences and uh, um, uh, he is from the uh, iflu university and had a Uh, phd from the central university of english and foreign languages hyderabad and uh, did mphil and uh, pg dte in ma and he had written many uh, articles related to uh, let's skill level uh, writing in the telugu and um, a philosophical study and he did, he wrote many books and also uh, helped us uh, in many of uh, the material that we uh, prepared for the improvement of language uh, and especially in english uh, to the andhra pradesh so so uh, we feel very proud to be here sir uh, jairaj garu uh, thank you thank um, you so uh, we heartily welcome to this uh, uh, program uh, sir please uh, let's start your session hello yes sir thank yes please much, sir thanks for introducing uh, uh, professor selvendra jairaj who today's topic is phonetics part 1 thank you hello. sir please start your presentation hello i'm yes, just sir. connecting my headphones uh, okay uh, just a minute i welcome you all to this compendious uh, presentation on phonetics particularly for the teachers of andhra pradesh and uh, it's an honor for me to be with you all this morning here i also thank all the organizers and uh, especially uh uh the administrative officers the administrative officers who have been toiling behind uh, the implementation of the english medium education in andhra pradesh i Uh, uh take this opportunity and i really thank uh, pokuri srinivas garu and ismail garu for such a warm introduction and uh, <clears throat> today uh, i would like to draw your attention on phonetics and uh, in your schedule it is mentioned uh, phonetics 1 it is uh, mentioned as phonetics 1 so uh, phonetics 1 uh, is a uh, uh, a very general general term so uh, i would like to specify phonetics for our purpose this way phonetics for language learning and teaching right uh, the objectives behind this presentation uh, are to explore the need for phonetics in language teaching to infer the scope of uh, teaching phonetics in general to offer an understanding of english and telugu sound systems so these are the three important objectives i've been reflecting upon while you know uh, planning for this session you know when we talk about uh, language and language teaching in general you know uh, listening and speaking as you are all exposed to 
or primary tasks or activities. So in listening and speaking, when we say, you know, many languages in the world do not have script, but all the languages have uh, So we can't avoid uh, speaking and spoken aspects of a language. Speaking aspects of a language. So when we uh, speak, there is one important parameter we need to understand, which is very, very crucial, in fact, for defining languages. That is mutual intelligibility. When two, uh, when two or three people, or more than three people, more than two, when they communicate to each other, are they mutually intelligible? In fact, you know, to define languages, this criteria is very, very essential. If you want to say a particular linguistic code is a language, you have to test that particular code against mutual intelligibility in a given community. If you take up a community there, uh, if you see a linguistic code, and that code is mutually intelligible within the community, then Linguistically, we define that linguistic language. <clears throat> so mutual intelligibility is one of the important aspects we need to understand here. When it comes to the English language, we know that English is no more an Englishman's property. It's a global property. And moreover, you go to a particular country where English is not a, uh, 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 an official language, or uh, English is not uh, uh, the mother tongue. And if you go there, you will see a variety of English. If you go to Nigeria, you see a, Niger a variety of English called Nigerian English. Recently, a journalist from Delhi called me up and he was asking about certain features uh, uh, of English. The English, <clears throat> sorry, <clears throat> sorry, the English is spoken, <clears throat> the English is spoken in India. So that is, you know, uh, uh, what we have in India. And people are aware that we have Indian English or English, whatever we call it. Similarly, if you go to a particular country, any, any, any other country, you will see a variety of uh, English. So uh, when we have different varieties of English, and when these varieties are used in a global context, are they mutually intelligible? <clears throat> this is one of the important If they are not mutually intelligible, maybe at, at a different level, you can define them as English. But when it comes to functional, functional aspects of language, I think there is some uh, 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 deficiency with the variety. So when we uh, look at different varieties of English and the, and the aspects of mutual intelligence, uh, you know, we can see a lot of you know, intelligibility problems. For instance, if you look at, you know, uh, if you look at uh, 
uh, yeah, uh, when it comes to uh, uh, mutual intelligibility concept, according to our Indian tradition, in Panini and Siksha, Panini has uh, clearly mentioned uh, a constraint in his Siksha under Sloka 54. And the translation is here. If anybody reads the Veda without a show of hands and does not observe proper accents and places of articulation, Rik, Ejuz, and Saman, burn him, and on death, he attains rebirth as an inferior animal. Of course, there are certain religious beliefs uh, presented here. If you disassociate the religious beliefs and look at the language as a linguist or as a language teacher, I could see a concern of Panini that is mutual intelligibility or the intelligibility of the language. The places of articulation. That is very, very crucial. And when it comes to the sounds, you know, uh, he also says in uh, 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 verse uh, 52, the vowel sounds must be, you know, very, very clear. The vowels are very, very clear for clear speech and for understanding uh, uh, the speech. So, and he talks about consonants. He talks about vowels, he talks about intonation, he talks about the prominence. Dear friends, these are all spoken uh, 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 aspects of a particular language. So Panini uh, 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 came up with the Siksha in the context where Sanskrit was taught orally and it was spreading into different parts of the country. And in his contemporary times, there were seven to eight grammarians, Sanskrit grammarians, who used to teach Sanskrit. And Panini was one among them. Panini realized that, you know, Sanskrit had been spreading uh, to different parts of and wherever it went, it used to assume a new variety of Sanskrit. And there was a lot of confusion with regard to intelligibility. That's where Panini decided to write Ashtajayi and Panini and Siksha to see to that there won't be any intelligibility issues when Sanskrit is spoken across the country. So uh, the top priority while teaching a language, particularly speaking skills, the teachers, need, we the teachers need to focus on mutual intelligibility. That is an irreducible minimum while we teach listening and speaking. You know, sound distortion, you know, he says, Panini says further, a distortion of a sound brings about distortion in meaning. You know, see, I'll give you some illustrations here. Uh, sound distortion related issues. You know, I was uh, speaking to an Australian who was a, a British council teacher <clears throat> working in Libya. You know, we were working in the university. He was working in the language center. We uh, uh, went on a vacation. And when we got back to the work, I saw John and I was asking him, John, uh, uh, when did you come? He said, well, to die. Australians have this problem, A and I. 
wherever they see a, they, they say die, way, why. So uh, he said, you know, uh, 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 today, I came today, I came to die. I was uh, 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 jovially talking to him, you know, to die here, you need not to travel all the way from your country. Dear friends, A and I, the sound distortion brings about change in the meaning. They die, way, why? May, my. That is, uh, that was what Pandini was talking about. The sound distortion brings about change in the meaning or the distortion in the meaning. <clears throat> And for example, if you look at Indians, who and who, and particularly in some pockets of the country, they have a tendency to make long vowels short and short vowels long. When I was uh, dining uh, uh, with an American along with a couple of Indian friends, you know, <clears throat> I, you know, uh, 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 an American and uh, a couple of uh, Indian friends I was dining with. Uh, I was dining and then uh, the American uh, was offering some food to uh, other friends of uh, other Indian friends. <clears throat> and uh, uh, he says, oh, why didn't you take some more food? And he say, uh, the Indian friend said, well, uh, I'm full. I'm full. And uh, he, then he was really shocked. And he was asking, where are the Indians fools at the dining table? Your friends, sound distortion brings about change in the meaning. And in some pockets of the country, there's a problem of ver and wa. And they are pronounced as ber. If you want to say very good, they say very good. Very good. And Arabs have uh, uh, the problem of per and ber. Wherever they see per, they replace it with ber. And that's how uh, 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 pray becomes brave for them. So one sound brings about the change in the meaning of the utterance. So dear friends, we need to understand sound distortion is one of the hindrances for promoting intelligibility and in spoke uh, intelligibility of spoken varieties across the human languages. No matter what language you speak, the sounds of that language are very, very crucial for bringing out the meaning. And the distortion of those sounds will certainly lead to the distortion of the meaning. So this is one of the important uh, hindrances for promoting mutual intelligibility of spoken languages. Right, now, when you look at languageness, and apart from this, uh, there is another important aspect we need to remember. That is languageness. Every lang language has got its own quality. I would like to draw your attention to a video. Hello. Hope my video is uh, audible and visible. Yeah, quite audible and visible, sir. No, but uh, you, you, you haven't uh, started your sharing your screen now, sir. Sir? Please sh share your screen and you can play whatever you want, sir. Right. Perfectly all right. While sharing the screen, I selected that uh, sound, uh, enable the sound also. But uh, we are not uh, able Sorry? to... Yeah, we are not able to hear the uh, audio part. Video is okay, sir. 
right then uh, uh, we will proceed further yes sir you need to enable uh, at the, uh, there is a uh, option uh, uh, at the beginning of the screen sharing you need to select bottom two options right uh, uh, actually this is uh, a video of a particular uh, polyglot and he speaks many languages and uh, what we can do is we can proceed further and uh, you know i'll just uh, demonstrate you know if you take up uh, uh, when we talk about languageness if you take up telugu it has got its own quality if you take up malayalam it has got its own quality uh, uh, you know characterized by uh, nasal articulation retroflex articulation and uh, and if you take up telugu uh, you can see uh, a lot of uh, plosives across even you know uh, you can see uh, plosives very dominant across the indian languages and so uh, the speech is characterized uh, of plosion and we will come to that aspect a bit later but uh, what we need to understand is every language has got its own quality and that is what i call uh, uh, you know languageness if you take up arabic they say Assalamu alaikum. Kya hal? Shino jo walakam rahi. Kya sahadek? Taiba. So uh, gutturals are very very dominant in that language. And when you take up English, hello, how are you? Are you fine? Hope you are doing good. You know that kind of uh, native variety. And if you take up uh, American uh, 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 English, it has got a lot of nasality and rhoticity. And if you take up Hindi, uh, hello, bhaiya. Kaise hai? Uh, it has got its own quality, and uh, that is what I mean by languageness. Languageness is very, very uh, important in promoting mutual intelligibility of a language. You know, certain times we make mistakes uh, uh, gr uh, grammatically, but if you maintain the languageness see for example if you take up telugu we do make many mistakes in our day to day use of the telugu language you know uh, what we don't compromise with you know if somebody makes a grammatical mistake that that's a, that's taken you know we have we exercise grammatical tolerance but when it comes to pronunciation uh, uh, distortions you know people try to mock and uh, you know uh, 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 you know find fault with the pronunciation so uh, that way when it comes to listening and speaking what we need to understand is languageness is non negotiable languageness is non negotiable while teaching english so uh, why do we uh, need to focus on languages you know if you uh, do not focus on languageness it is very difficult to understand the pronunciation and uh, you know in a language teacher is a speech pathologist you know you should be able to understand languageness the problems of uh, pronunciation uh uh when the learners speak right and that way you have to identify the problems of the learners we will come to that a bit later but what we need to is languageness is also very important uh when while teaching uh listening and speaking with reference to a particular language so uh now let us move to uh phonetics when we look at phonetics for these reasons to promote mutual intelligibility we need to study phonetics because languageness that is where i uh want to introduce a very functional definition of phonetics right so when you look at phonetics functionally this is what we realize functionally it deals with the languageness where voice quality voice modulation 
certain important aspects of uh, uh, rhythm and uh, all these things contribute to languageness and the sounds of a language. So uh, phonetics functionally deals with the languageness, the sounds of a language. Dear friends, why do we need, uh, why do we need, uh, 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 why do we need to uh, teach phonetics at all at this juncture? See, we don't teach phonetics as a technical subject to the students. So there, is, you know, you take any topic or concept, there'll be two, one, the learner's version, two, the teacher's version. The teacher's version is called expert's version. And the learner's version is called user's version. So every you know, uh, uh, time when we talk about phonetics, we need to remember these two different versions. One, expert's version, the phonetics for teachers, Two, the phonetics for learners, where we need not to talk about all the technicalities and technical terms. We have to teach uh, certain aspects that are very, very crucial for mutual intelligibility in a very, very practical manner. We need not to get into the details or the nuances of that particular concept. So uh, here, I'm attention to the experts, experts version of phonetics. However, uh, uh, in tomorrow's, you know, uh, uh, my tomorrow's session will reflect upon uh, converting this experts version into uh, the user's version or the learner's version. That is, you know, that convergence is very, very crucial while we teach uh, any concept, any technical concept. So dear friends, this is where, you know, most of the times when people start teaching or, or learning phonetics, uh, they don't realize these two versions. So whatever they learn as, uh, as teachers, the technical version, they try to present the same technical version or uh, 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 academic version or uh, too scientific to the students then the whole purpose of teaching the particular aspect gets defeated. So we need to understand here uh, uh, this important uh, uh, you know, criteria uh, or criterion in teaching uh, languages. So today we are reflecting upon <clears throat> the expert's version or the teacher's version of phonetics. So otherwise, phonetics for teachers. Uh, I have mentioned two things, phonetics, uh, uh, phonetics for teaching and learning. So teaching and learning. So we are looking at teachers phonetics today. As a teacher, if you don't get your facts and figures, the ideas and insights very clear, it's very difficult to convert those scientific and technical concepts into practicalities in the classroom. So that is where, that's where I encourage you all to have an expert's understanding of phonetics. So why do we need uh, phonetics at all? What are the tasks and targets for teachers? Of course, our tasks and targets are towards intelligibility of English, if you take up the English language education in Andhra Pradesh. So uh, there are three important uh, 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 know, needs or tasks and targets when we look at the English language in terms of a mutual intelligibility. While teaching, uh, listening and speaking, we need to identify the needs of the learners. 
what are the problems what are the problems they have what are the problems they have in terms of languageness and pronunciation you know uh, some students may be using ra very very overtly instead of saying burn they may say burn tharn so as a teacher unless and otherwise you have a, a thorough understanding of the teacher's version or the expert's version of phonetics it is very difficult to identify such problems of the learners and design tasks it's you know identify needs is uh, more or less like uh, uh, diagnosing diagnosing the problems of the learners in terms of speaking and listening and you know after understanding the learners problems you have to come up with uh, tasks you know uh, ap teachers are uh, uh, i had a very wonderful experience when they were developing uh, know how modules uh, they are quite skilled uh, when they started thinking along those uh, lines along the lines of identifying needs and immediately uh, they could reflect upon the solutions for the problems of the learners so how to design tasks day and night they used to discuss and come up with nice tasks effective tasks that really help the learners to come out of the uh, uh, pronunciation problems or the listening problems they face and once you understand the needs of the learners the problems of the learners once you design the task to help the learners to come out of those problems your training your training your training uh, with regard to uh, speaking and listening will take a very fruitful and productive path so for this purpose we need to understand the technical or the experts version of phonetics dear friends hope you understood the purpose behind having a very very sound knowledge of phonetics from expert from an expert's point of view right let us let us move further i think uh, uh, one more teacher is going to reflect upon certain important aspects but this morning i would like to draw your attention on segmentals when i say in the previous uh, 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 on the previous slide the functional definition languageness where rhythm intonation uh, and prominence <clears throat> uh, voice quality these are very very crucial and uh, uh, it talks about uh, languageness refers to those things and uh, the sounds of a language when we talk about the sounds of a language we are talking about symbols so we have supra segmentals like pitch stress uh, uh duration and voice quality or quality and on the other hand we have uh the segmental issues with regard to the english language let us look at uh, the speech apparatus human speech apparatus dear friends you know uh doing phonetics is nothing but mastering our speech apparatus in our speech apparatus that is why i always uh, 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 encourage my students my research scholars not to be afraid of phonetics phonetics is nothing but understanding the human speech apparatus and also using the speech apparatus effectively while learning different languages so uh, if you take up speech human speech apparatus you know from lips to the glottis 
from the lips to the glottis, if you can see the diagram, you have lips, two lips, and down there, you have a circular, uh, you know, circle kind of, uh, not circle, uh, uh, in oval shape. Uh, that is, that is, that is uh, the glottis, where we see the vocal folds. So from the uh, lips to the glottis, we call it uh, uh, the speech apparatus. This speech apparatus is uh, similar and the same in structure and anatomy across the human languages. You may have thousands of languages in the human culture and societies. Thousands of languages with different uh, qualities, different qualities of uh, uh, language or different uh, aspects of languageness, different shades of languageness. But the speech apparatus is the same. It is something like this. If you take up a guitar, you may have smaller one and bigger one, but guitar is guitar across the cultures. So it is uh, the human speech apparat apparatus is uh, uh, similar and the same across the human languages. This is what we need to understand. We need not to worry about uh, British variety or American variety or Spanish or Greek or Arabic, whatever it may be. It may be, uh, be it a Romance language, be it a Semitic language, be it a Asian language. So whatever it may be, the speech apparatus is the same. The only thing is the small and the big speech uh, 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 organs. That is where uh, it differs, but the same and uh, similar speech apparatus. When we take up uh, speech apparatus, human speech, there are uh, 11 places of uh, uh, articulation across the human languages. Humans, in short, humans can use only the 11 places of articulation. There is no 12 place of articulation in the human uh, uh, history. So by research, you know, the linguists and phoneticians and phonologists have arrived at these 11 places of articulation and say that, you know, these are the only 11 places of articulation humans use across uh, human languages. And uh, uh, see, but there is no language, there is no single language that uses all the places of articulation, 11 places of articulation. So out of these 11 places of articulation, some use six, some use 10, some use eight, but there is no single language in the world so far uh, that uses all the 11 places of articulation. Dear friends, if you take up the English language, uh, English speakers use eight places of articulation. When you take up Arabs and uh, the speakers of Semitic languages, they use 10 places of articulation. When we take up uh, the Indian, Indian speakers of Indian languages, they use nine places of articulation. So Indians use nine places of articulation. Arabs use 10 places of articulation. Uh, uh, English speakers use eight places of articulation. So dear friends, this is what we need to understand here. When we are talking about languageness, these places of articulation are very, very important. You know, if we take up guitar, there are frets 
you know, uh, at different fret, you produce different sound quality. So 11 places are there. At 11 places, 11 different sound qualities can be produced. That's why we need to be very, very careful of the places of articulation when we teach a particular language. So uh, uh, British guys use only 11, uh, eight places of articulation, but we use nine places of articulation. <laughs> we are in a more advantageous position when it comes to speaking and listening. And Arabs are really more in more advantageous condition. However, uh, how they use and perceive are totally different. For example, we will come to those 11 places of articulation. Let us come to, uh, uh, sorry. Yeah, these are the 11 places of, uh, sorry, uh, where? Uh, see, for example, if you take up uh, uh, 11 places, uh, look at uh, the list of 11 places of articulation. We have bilabials, papa, but labiodentals, when we pronounce per and ba, we use both the lips, we call uh, 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 per and ma by labials. And we have labiodentals like fur, ver. In detail, we will look at those phonemes tomorrow. But I'm drawing your attention on certain aspects of accurate pronunciation and uh, 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 the pronunciation with uh, proper languageness. Right? So, uh, bilabials, labiodentals, uh, bilabials, two lips, labiodentals, uh, the lower lip and upper front teeth, and dentals, the tip of the tongue and uh, 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 tip of the tongue and uh, 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 teeth, upper front teeth, alveolars, and you see alveolar ridge, <clears throat> and uh, uh, the tip or blade of the tongue and uh, alveolar ridge. And similarly, post alveolars, you know, the place behind uh, the alveolar ridge is called post alveolar. So retroflexions, uh, uh, actually, Indians, Indian languages are very rich in retroflexions. So, uh, la, la, uh, uh, gana, gana, uh, uh, nya, uh, 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 sorry, nya is a nasal, uh, not a retroflex. So, ta, da, Na, na, la. These are retroflexions, you know, uh, Indian language, where, uh, which are dominant Indian, Indian languages, which are popular in Indian languages, if not dominant. So we have palatal region, where hard palate uh, uh, is involved, and velar region at the back of the tongue, and you have uvula. See, if you take up palatal uvula, I will demonstrate these three places. By taking k, uh, in Arabic, we have three, and not only in Arabic, in Semitic languages, you have three different kinds of k. One is k, the other one is k, the other one is ka. So, k, ka, 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 ka three regions at three different regions three different sounds prime is k but it sounds different when you change the place of articulation when you make it palatal k <coughs> sorry when you take up k it is palatal when you take up it is vela when you take up Call, call. It is uvula. So uvulas and pharyngeals, pharyngeals, for example, if you take up semitic ha. Ha, ha is down there uh, from glottis. But if you move slightly above, you will see the pharyngeal region. In the pharyngeal region, uh, you will be able to produce ha, ha, ha. So, and glottis ha. 
So these are the 11 relations human use across the human languages. Now, when it comes to the human speech apparatus in English, English has got uh, uh, 11 places of Arctic, uh, sorry, uh, uh, I, I will come to the 11 places of articulation once again, and then let us come to human speech apparatus. There is another important uh, aspect called manner of articulation, which are very, very important. So you can produce some sound through nasal, you can produce the same sound through uh, oral region, oral cavity, and orals, nasals, and all those things. Let us look at uh, those manners of articulation. We have plosives where you see a plosion kind of effect. You know, most of the Indian languages are rich in plosives. When you take up the English language, you know, plosives are just six. But in Indian languages, we have nearly uh, 20 plosives. Six versus 20. So uh, uh, definitely plosives and the frequency of plosives is very high, very high uh, uh, in Indian languages. And then if the plosives are more, such languages sound like tapataka, chetapataka, tapata, badagada, jeda, badagada, but you know, that is the effect when the languages which are rich with plosives are spoken. That is the effect. Nasals, you know, some languages are rich in nasals, and they, uh, you will see a lot of nasality in their speech, in their, uh, 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 you know, with, with regard to that language. And trills, trills, you know, uh, you know, there are some languages where some African languages use trills. So there are trills. Those thrills are very, very dominant and taps and flaps. Similarly, fricatives, English uses nine fricatives and then laterals, approximants. These are manners of articulation. We need to understand when we have the experts view of the manners of articulation and places of articulation, we will be able to understand the learners problems in a very systematic manner. Where does my learner face uh, uh, the problem? Uh, 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 does he face the problem with a place of articulation or the manner of articulation? If my learner faces a particular problem with the manner of articulation, what kind of exercises I need to design and offer a kind of training? So uh, this is what we need to uh, uh, understand that is the reason why we need to do a bit of phonetics uh, in an expert's way. Right now, let us come to English speech and places of articulation. English uses eight places of articulation, as I mentioned, and these are the uh, 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 eight places, uh, the eight places of articulation, and we will we can move forward. And then, if you look at manners. Uh, in English, we can see six manners of articulation. English has got plosives, English has got nasals, English has got taps, English has got fricatives, English has got laterals, English has got uh, approximants. When you take up uh, 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 the classification of the sounds, uh, in English, we have six plosives. Nasals are just three. There are nine fricatives, one lateral, two affricates. Affricates uh, are the combination of plosion and uh, friction. That's why I haven't mentioned affrication or affricates here as a separate manner of articulation. So uh, it's a combination of plosion and friction. So they, they have two affricates and one continuant that is approximant continuant like uh, 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 approximants, we can say there are uh, three approximants in English. So that is how we can look at the English language. But when it comes to uh, Telugu, Telugu has got 20 poses. In principle, we have five fricatives, but 
most of the times we could see only three fricatives. For example, if you take up, you know, plosives, we have pa, pa, ba, ba, ta, ta, da, da, ta, ta, da, da, ka, ka, ga, ga. You know, these are the plosives. And we have nearly 20, we have exactly 20 plosives. But when it comes to fricatives, sa, sh, ha, I think, you know, we have uh, sa, sa, sh, ha. I think we have, sorry, uh, we have only fa, uh, four uh, fricatives, but most of the times, sa and the sa, sa and the sa are you know, uh, uh, are in free variation. It means, you know, we use one for the other. Still, we don't have any intelligibility issues. So practically and functionally, we have only three fricatives. In English, we have six fricatives. Uh, uh, by this, we can understand nearly 66% uh, uh, extra uh, of uh, fricatives in English. Right, so uh, only 33% fricatives in Telugu, and uh, you know you can see uh, 66 or six cent of fricatives in English. Uh, that way, we can understand fricative character or quality is very dominant while people speak English, while native speakers speak English. But Indian languages, Indian languages are not rich in fricatives. So when they are very rich in plosives, so Indian languages are characterized by plosion. So plosion, you know, you will see a plosive effect, as I mentioned earlier, katapata, chitapata, gadabada, gidabada. And when you take up fricatives, they're friends. That contributes a lot to languageness. Languageness matters a lot, as I always demonstrate in our in my presentations across India, and also uh, 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 participants of English, uh, learners of English and researchers. I draw their attention on one important question. You know, I present to uh, 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 you know, an expression in two different varieties. My brother from America, my brother is coming from America. When I ask the people uh, to choose one uh, out of their preference, they choose always, you know, in Indian context, they choose the second one. My brother is coming from America. But when I uh, ask them another question, if you have a child, if your child wants to, if you want your child to speak English, which way, they immediately take U-turn and come to uh, uh, my brother from America. Why? The issue is languageness. My brother is coming from America grammatically sound, but in terms of languageness, very, very poor. Languageness is the irreducible minimum while teaching, speaking, and listening, listening and speaking. Languageness promotes intelligibility, even though it is grammatically wrong, even though it is grammatically wrong. In terms of languageness, it is rich. That's why it is more optimal one. So here, let me tell you, yeah, while speak, while teaching, speaking, and learning and listening, while teaching, speaking, and listening, languageness is the top priority. Right, that is, you know, non-negotiable. Speech quality, languageness are non-negotiables, but 
when it comes to grammaticality it is negotiable in speaking we do make mistakes in our mother tongue grammatical mistakes yet we have we exercise grammatical tolerance and we have no issues we try to negotiate with grammatical mistakes of course when you go for reading and writing which is a systematic activity in terms of cognitive mechanisms uh, i think that's where we need to promote grammatical structure and its accuracy right now i'll just uh, 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 browse uh, quickly on these issues and uh, 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 right so when it comes to trills in english we don't have trills but when it takes when we when we take up telugu we have for example if we take up r r is an approximant or continuum in english but in indian uh, in telugu we have it as tap ra 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 river and when you take up the word river uh, we pronounce it as uh, we pronounce it this way river re that is tap r that is trill we have two ras in english they don't normally they drop r or if it all uh, ra retains that is as a tap an approximant so so we they have approximant ra but we have trill and tap ras so difference that is where we need to understand whenever we migrate to uh, the english speaking we carry uh, 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 these telugu uh, manners of articulation uh, to the english language and that uh, that affects the languageness of the english language and that causes in turn an intelligibility so right now let us come to uh 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 the telugu uh uh, uh 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 sounds and when it comes to uh uh the manner of articulations manners of articulation we have seen the difference we have bilabials we have labiodentals in telugu we have uh, we have dentals but when it comes to fricatives ma manners you know we uh don't have a uh, fricative th and th but english has got th and th th and th are plosives in telugu language dear friends what we need to understand here is this kind of experts understanding needs to be paid attention while we try to teach the english language to the rural uh, 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 students of andhra pradesh not only that even in the urban areas most of the times you know uh, uh, we see uh, uh, telugu intervention while speaking the english language here you may uh, 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 raise a question sir why should we speak like an american or british dear friends you know uh, if we are serious teachers of english or any language if we are serious language teachers uh we should have an experts understanding when you buy a car you always look at it and you want it you don't want to buy any defective you know a uh, 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 car vehicle why you have a perfectionist view while you are paying our learners are paying us they are paying us through their time and uh, through their governments and you know if you talk to uh, uh, the parents of uh, the learners of english language in andhra pradesh you know they need good english they want their children to speak english english in the sense not the english which is defective the english which is effective 
which is intelligible not in, uh, uh, in the local uh, regions but also in the global regions i always tell my uh, 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 you know always mention this to uh, uh, the teacher trainees at iflo the indian english in the classroom you and i are not needed you know indian english see uh, uh, when uh, of course in terms of policy uh, our model is british variety for x y reasons english offers clear speech in uh, american variety has got a lot of uh, problems with regard to nasality rhoticity uh, tapping and swapping and uh, so many other uh, i have nearly 20 uh, phonetic features that are uh, 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 hindrances uh, of uh, uh, hindrances to mutual intelligibility with a reference to american english but when it comes to british variety uh, for its historical uh, uh, reasons and uh, uh, geographically widespread uh, it is uh, it is it is tested that that uh, british variety is the most intelligible variety that's why i have uh, written a research paper on uh, efficiency efficiency uh, is a tool for promoting mutual intelligibility efficiency is a copyrighted term i have proposed this term and efficiency is nothing but proficiency in rp is proved to be more intelligible in the global context let me tell you one important thing here there are three domains where the telugu learners of english need to use english one in the telugu states they can use the english language two in the national context i call it regional context speaking in english to uh, geographical region uh, is called the regional domain so uh, the so the learners have regional purposes behind learning english that is one two when they go out of the states into the other parts of the country they have to use the english language as a national variety in indian english uh, uh, you know people call it indian english and uh, but within india there are n number of uh, or different varieties of english if you go to kashmir uh, the english is spoken is different from the english is spoken in kerala and uh, similarly you know uh, uh, the english is spoken by tamilians is different from the english is spoken by uh, marathis right so there are n number of varieties across india so when we go out so when the learners go out of the state uh, they should uh, speak uh, 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 the variety which can be intelligible Uh, uh in the national domain <coughs> so sorry sir uh, regional variety uh, or regional purposes so our learners sorry, have sir. Re sorry uh, if anything is left to show through through the screen sharing if it is not i'm concluding stock, i'm com i'm no, concluding no, yeah. yeah i'm concluding for a full, a full size image you need to stop sharing if uh, if you still want to show right. something perfectly all right perfectly all right okay. so uh I thought I would draw their attention to some uh, of the uh, templates later. No problem. Okay. So uh, that is what we need to understand uh, when it when it comes to the purposes behind learning a, a, a language must be looked at uh, uh, according to the uh, uh, regional, uh, national, and international. purposes right so there are three uh, 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 levels of purpose N local or regional purpose then national purpose and then international purpose in an english 
uh, nobody taught me in in english always my teacher has the british english as the model when she uh, teaches me some english still her model or his model is the british variety when she produces some materials for the learning and teaching still uh, the teacher has the british variety as a reference model and uh, uh, right so when the teacher tries to test my proficiency or progress in uh, 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 in proficiency she has uh, the british variety as a reference model so everywhere british variety and british variety and british variety but the outcome is some local variety that's what i say all the time when we talk about uh, 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 in in english it is a mysterious variety our teachers follow british variety and teachers english some local variety so it is something like this you sow a mango seed and and reap grapes that is a mysterious uh, uh, that is the mystery in the entire story dear friends what we need to understand here is to teach the national and uh, regional varieties of english uh, uh, the teachers are not needed it is automatic it is automatic you teach some english they will learn whatever they learn they approximate it to their mother tongue they mix and match with their mother tongue aspects and then come up with local variety but we need to teach them the global variety our students are in a context where they have to live locally but communicate both locally and globally when the local variety is automatic how to achieve the global variety that is where i always come up with a proposition that we need to focus on global variety and which promotes mutual intelligibility and uh, i will present a principle here and stop my presentation and will be open for uh, uh, q and a so dear friends while teaching i uh, always propose a principle for speaking have the british variety as a model so train yourself in british variety because the british variety is the most intelligible variety across the globe second of course you saw with local variety already so they had they will have two varieties when they speak to indians they approximate their accent to local variety when british they will approximate their accent to uh, 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 global variety since they are trained in global variety if they are not trained in global variety all the time locally or globally they use the same variety that invites the intelligibility problems so the principle here is when you are training yourself in terms of uh, pronunciation production follow the british variety when you try to listen when it comes to listening get exposed to n number of variety because whenever you go to a country there is a local variety so how to develop you know uh, 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 develop a, a, a repertoire or cognitive abilities to approximate your listening to the uh, uh, local varieties of english so this is the principle for production british variety for perception it is that way our learners will be more skillful and definitely be successful across the globe while they use the english language dear friends i welcome you all with your questions and thank you for giving me this opportunity and over to uh uh ismail garu and uh uh srinivasa thank you very much sir thank you very much for the presentation we have so few questions uh, let me ask the question sir tomorrow uh, yes sir. sorry for the interruption tomorrow yes, i'll come up with uh, my phonetics 2 lecture 
uh, where we will look at the problems of the letters. Over to you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, the first question is, uh, why they he is a party from Chinnagardila, Vishakhapatnam. How can I teach phonetics to primary students as, as yes. uh, teachers yes, may not be that much? Yeah. Very good question, sir. Uh, very relevant. And uh, this is where I was mentioning about the conver uh, convergence of experts' version of phonetics and the learner's version of phonetics. And you need not to talk about plosives, which is a technical term to the learners. You need not to talk about languageness, which is a technical term. You need not to talk about intonation, but you can always demonstrate through us. We can always demonstrate the English language and languageness through our speech or help them get exposed to uh, 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 the l British variety of uh, uh, languageness so that you know they can get acquainted with the variety. And doing phonetics is not uh, 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 doing the analysis speech in a more technical terms, no, for the from the learner's point of view. For the teacher's point of view, you need to reflect upon those technicalities. From the learner's point of view, what matters is what do you make them hear, what do you make them produce? That matters a lot. Without, you know, it is something like this. You know, most of the times we try to mention this. We have to teach grammar inductively. We need not to uh, uh, teach grammar uh, uh, technically or deductively. You need not to talk about all the technical involved in grammar, but you present the functional aspects of grammar. That's where we talk about functional grammar or community communicative grammar things like that. Similarly, uh, somewhere we have to take up phonetics and make it functional and communicative. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, with the continuation of that question, I have another question. Venkateswara uh, yes, Vaija. Remembering these phonetics sounds are very difficult. Uh, how can we work on this problem to keep in practice? See, uh, 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 I don't think it is a problematic one because Telugu has uh, around 50 plus uh, uh, letters, <laughs> but English has got 44 names. The quantum is very, <laughs> in terms of quantity, you know, uh, Telugu, uh, English has less number of uh, names. Right? It is only, you know, most of the times, uh, 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 the phonetics, you know, English is presented to be uh, 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 presented uh, that you know, presented as a devil to the learners of English right from the childhood, and uh, uh, that is uh, to the learners. But for the teachers, phonetics is presented as a devil. <laughs> Thank you. <sir. laughs> so we have to overcome, or we have to conquer uh, these two devils. Children should conquer uh, uh, the devil of English as a language. And uh, the teacher should conquer uh, or overcome the devil of phonetics. It is as simple as uh, uh, any other subject, sir. Yeah, thank you, sir. Yeah, thank you, sir. And tomorrow I'm going to present certain sounds and uh, uh, how to deal with them in a classroom and things like that. Yeah, thank you, sir. Uh, Isman, am I edible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Please okay. ask. Sir, uh, a teacher from the Giddaluru asked that, how does the sounds of mother tongue influence learning sounds of English, uh, whether they promote or inhibit learning English? Uh, it was his uh, question, sir. Uh, well, you know, see, actually, uh, you know, uh, from behaviorist point of view, there are two schools, you know, behaviorist school and cognitive school. People, some people believe that language is a behavior pattern. Some people believe that uh, language is a psychological reality, cognitive ability. So uh, what we need to understand here is pronunciation is 
more of behavior. It's a behavior pattern. So, uh, you know, when we take up uh, uh, Telugu learners, you know, they have certain problems. They, they have, you know, I don't think, I don't say they are problems. Their mother tongue has got certain features of languages. We have to identify them. And while they try to learn the English language, we have to disassociate those mother tongue uh, uh, languageness issues with the other tongue languageness issues. That should be technically and systematically planned. Uh, 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 you know, in our teaching plans and in our teaching schedules, right? And you know, certainly, you know, for example. We are rich in plosives, and uh, when we talk about uh, plosives, uh, uh, English uh, uh, fricatives, the and the, are plosivized, are made plosives in Telugu because we don't have uh, the, uh, fricative the, the. So we replace them uh, with the the and the. So that you know adjustment, if uh, if it is blocked and systematically, you know. Uh, uh, plan the activities, we can help the learners. You know, uh, there are uh, uh, beautiful uh, speakers of English whose, uh, uh, whose mother tongue is Telugu. They speak, they approximate their English to the local variety and global variety by observing these uh, features in a very functional manner. Yes, sir. Yeah, thank you, sir. Uh, another question what they asked that, how does uh, uh, stress differ from uh, intonation? Uh, well, I think, you know, some other people, uh, Dr. Poolma is going to talk about stress and uh, I prefer to not uh, talk about this, uh, uh, those things in this session. Yeah. I think we have to wait for uh, uh, Poolma's webinar. Oh. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, one, yeah, please, yeah, sir. one more question, uh, Ismail. Yes, um, what principle should we use to tune us from local variety of English to global variety? She is from uh, Nagalakshmi Garu from Westwood Avery. Uh, sorry, can you repeat the question once again? What principle should we use to tune us from local variety of English to global variety of English? See, uh, uh, the principle is just this. Use the global variety while listening. Yeah. And uh, listening is an input of languageness. And if uh, languageness enters, and certainly the languageness comes out. So use the most intelligible varieties of English samples while listening. That is the principle. Right. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much, sir, uh, for your uh, nice presentation. Really, so we have so many, but uh, time is running out. So uh, on behalf of the Andhra Pradesh teachers, uh, on my own behalf, we uh, uh, submit our uh, gratitude to you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your great presentation, sir. One more announcement, uh, Ismail. Yes, One more. Please ahead, sir. So, yes. uh, yeah. so in the Abhyas app today, the material uh, is not available. But tomorrow, there will be material of both today's session and tomorrow's session well. And assessment speak. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, and then, sir. Namaste. Thank you. We'll thank you very tomorrow. much. Thank you. We'll meet tomorrow.